Let's start with the make. Just what is a clean break? Well, this is a pretty clean break. You can clearly see if you slice down and then lift up from underneath, the two sides of the curd will come away from each other. If you're ever using a whisk to make cheese, make sure that the tines are sealed at the end where they join the handle because that's a great place for bacteria to live. I've talked before about cutting the curd and why we do that. Basically, it's to get the whey out faster. The smaller the curd, the less whey it will hold on to. So when you're making alpine style cheeses like this Gruyere, you'll find that actually uh, it will let go of its whey a lot more readily if you cut the curd really small. Now this can be a problem if you're making a different kind of cheese like a cheddar or something soft that's supposed to be pliable like a Colby or a Jack. If you let too much whey out too early, you'll find that actually those cheeses will become brittle and the curd itself won't end up being the way it should be. It won't age out properly. It will still be edible, but it won't be the cheese that you were going for. So when your recipe says cut into half inch or one centimeter cubes, or your recipe says you're going for fava bean style cubes or cottage cheese sized, try and aim for the one that you've actually been told to aim for because it's really quite important. Let's taste some cheese. As part of my studies, I'm doing these 75 cheeses for the Academy of Cheese and you have to taste these cheeses. Well, I grew up in Britain and this list is heavily weighted towards British cheeses and European cheeses. Um, I'm trying today Red Leicester. This is very strange for me. Uh, got this at Birch and Boar here in Prince George, local purveyor of excellent fine foods. Um, and this is very strange to me because I grew up on Red Leicester. We would always have this in the fridge. So I've eaten this a hundred times, millions of times. Don't know that I've ever actually tasted it. Mm. I mean, I'm licking a packet at this rate. Okay. So if you know me, you know that Red Leicester and Double Gloucester, proper favorites of mine growing up. Uh, although cheddar cheese should never be orange, that is anathema to me as a British person. Uh, bright orange, other territorial cheeses, perfectly fine. So Red Leicester, obviously made in Leicestershire. Uh, that's how you pronounce it. All of the other letters don't matter at all. We just throw them in there just for some fun. Um, Okay, this is so very strange. Tasting, trying to taste objectively a cheese that I know well and have known my whole life. So we have the simple flavors in the middle, the detail flavors on the yellow and subtlety in the blue. Well, subtlety's never been a strong point of mine, but we'll give it a go. All right, what are we smelling? Cheese, smells like cheese. Um, nothing really distinguishing. Good snap. Initially, we've got buttery. It's creamy. Um, no bitterness, no acidity. No, that's unfair. Some acidity, but it's low. This is mild. This is nowhere near like an aged cheddar. Um, It is sweet. I would say it's sweetish. It's no mimolette, but you know, it is sweet. A little brown sugar, just a tiny bit. The savory is coming through. It's quite high in fat, um, buttery, definitely. There's a slight umami. Kind of, not really a beef broth, but like a beef um, hint, a hint of beef. So we are supposed to be tasting flaky and buttery and nutty notes, often described as mellow. Yeah, then that makes this a prime example. This is exactly what I grew up on. This is exactly what I know. 
Uh, my mother would put this in my lunchbox. I would have this in cheese sandwiches with salt and vinegar crisps and I'd put the crisps in the sandwich and smash it down. Oh, food of the kings. I'm not gonna have much of the rind left to show you a picture of if I don't take one soon, but this is very, very yummy. Time for a top tip. If you're making a cheese like this cheddar and it doesn't knit together very well, and you plan on vacuum sealing it for aging it anyway, don't worry too much about it. The vacuum seal will help to close up some of these cracks. If you were going to natural rind this cheese, you would be digging mold out of every one of these crevices. So that's just going to make your life more complicated. And now for a farm update. We've suddenly dropped about 20 degrees, so the ice is here. The snow is coming and hopefully I can then start to use my shed again to store my animal feed. At the moment, I have to use the back of my daughter's car. Uh, you can see me here mixing um, goat text in with the alfalfa grain that I feed to my animals when I'm milking them. It's the only way I can get them to stand still. Also, my feed bill has halved since all those teenage boys moved out. That's fabulous. We're back to about $75 a week to feed the goats. So uh, tell me again how my milk is free. And this is goat art. She's my alpha. She leads the pack here, even though she's the smallest of the adult goats that I have. She's Nigerian dwarf, crossed with pygmy. There's a little bit of alpine in there as well, somewhere not too distant in her past. Um, she has kidded in the past up to four babies at once. This year she only gave two, but she is giving me a lot of really good milk. Now, I use a milking machine and you can see why, because everything is covered in mud right now. Also, I do have tendonitis in my arm, which would make milking just absolute torture. Goatsart has the most adorable beard I think I've ever seen. What's new in cheese this week? Well, unless you're living under a rock, you know that the World Cheese Awards are coming this weekend. 2023 is in Trondheim in Norway and... All of the best cheese judges in the world are headed and will taste nearly 4,000 cheeses this year. Uh, the whole thing will be posted on their YouTube channel so you can watch along. Some of it's actually streamed live and I know what I'll be doing this weekend. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next week.